Back in 2016, I found myself on the lookout for new editing software. The software that I was using at the time was full of a lot of features that I didn't need, a lot of features I didn't use, and in a lot of cases, features I didn't really even understand. And that combined to make a large, slow process that made it tricky for me to find what it was that I wanted to do. It really slowed down my workflow. And what's worse, it even forced me in a lot of cases to work the way the designers of the software work instead of the way that I preferred to work. Now, when I found Sublime Text, it was a real revelation because its mindset was exactly the opposite of that. Instead of being a large, bloated piece of software, it was small, it was focused, and it was intended for me to add to it the features that I need to work the way that I want to work instead of trying to adapt myself to the way that the software works. Now, in the spirit of that, given that this is still November, I thought that we'd show how with just a little bit of plug-in logic, we can extend not only commands and functionality in Sublime Text, but also the work flow of existing features as well. And so in this video, we're going to go over a very small plugin that allows you to open all of the files that match a particular search term with only one key press. Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this November video on augmenting your workflow in Sublime Text. Before we get to all that augmentation goodness, though, as a reminder, if you're getting any value out of the videos, if you're finding them useful, helpful, informative, then please do show your support by using those buttons down below the video to thumbs subscribe and share as you deem appropriate, because your continued support is what makes continued production of these videos possible. Don't forget, you can also use the comment section below any video if you have any questions, comments, requests for clarifications, even suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video. The topic of today's video, though, is uh, continuing on in our trend of augmenting uh, the ability of Sublime Text to have new functionality, and in particular, uh, augmenting your workflow. Because as we've seen, we can use plugins to add useful new functionality. What we may not have realized is that we could also use that to change the functionality and workflow of existing features in Sublime Text as well. Now, this goes back to what we were talking about in last week's video with the Find in Files panel. Remember, you can go to the Find menu, jump down to find in files that's down here or use the appropriate key binding. The menu will always show you what key is bound to these commands. And that opens this panel at the bottom of the window to allow us to search through all of the files in our project or just on the hard drive in general. We're not going to go into, again, as we said last week, into the details of how this panel works. But due to popular demand, there is going to be an upcoming video on uh, the whole find in files panel. So if you're unfamiliar with it, keep your eye tuned for that. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and say that uh, we could search for, as we saw last week, all of the results uh, in this particular project for this particular term. And it's telling us that it searched 33 files and it has found some. And this is could be used for a variety of purposes. And we see here, we get to see the names of all of the files that had matches. We get to see all of the lines that have matches and context lines surrounding them. So that just by looking at this, we not only see where the match is, but uh, what exactly is going on in that part of the file, which can help you understand what's going on there. And there are a lot of workflows related to how this works. Uh, for example, we might just be interested in looking to see uh, if all of the references to this are correct or something along those lines. Uh, if this class is being used in the way that I think it's being used, or if I was working on uh, CSS, if the CSS classes are being applied in a way that I expected. In that case, all you really have to do is look through these results to be able to find uh, that information out. You can see the context lines. I can look, I can say, yeah, this all looks good. Close the panel, good to go. Never had to touch the mouse you may instead actually want to go to the locations in the file. Now, as we saw last week, you could use your mouse to double click on each of those particular matches. And you could uh, also use the plugin that we developed uh, last week to do that with the key binding so you don't have to reach for the mouse, which again, uh, increases your uh, throughput and not having to disrupt what you're doing to take your hands off of the keyboard. But what if your interest in this is less on what the actual matches are in the file and more what the files actually are. Now, in this case, the way that this thing opens up uh, all of these results, if there's a lot of matches, we can see here, there's actually five files that contain this, but we can only see uh, two of them on the screen at this particular time. Now, what we could do is use the folding functionality to fold all of these up, and now we can see exactly the files that are interested here, and we can see that there's 20 matches across all of these five files. And if we just wanted to know the names of the files, 
Well, now we have them. But what if we wanted to actually open these particular files? So I'm just going to unfold that now. If we wanted to open each one of these files, not necessarily at the location of matches, but just to have them open. Uh, say, for example, we're doing something where any file that has a certain search term, we need to just go through it and double check that everything is in order. And it's not necessarily related to the search term per se. It's the whole file we need to look at. How would we go about doing that? Well, one way to do that would be to reach for the mouse, find the first match in the first file, double click it, that's gonna open it in a tab. Then you come back to the find and results tab, scroll down to the next file, double click on the first match, that's gonna open the file, come back, that is, I'm not even demonstrating that because that is boring and tedious and requires a lot of mouse action. If you only have one or two files, that's probably fine. If you have like five files as I have here and there's lots of matches, that's a lot of scrolling. That's a lot of looking. Uh, that's the sort of thing that's prone to error. You might miss one file with one match in the midst of a file that has 200 matches or something along those lines. Using the keyboard shortcut that we learned about and with the plugin in last week's video would help a little bit, but not so much. Now, Sublime actually lets you navigate through all of the find results by using a simple key press, and uh, you can find that in the menu uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing. I guess I said we're not really discussing that whole thing here. But what this key does is iterate through all of the matches that are found. So if I push the key, the first match opens in the first file. And then every time I press the key, we're navigating to the next place where that match exists. And when we get to the bottom of the first file, then the next file opens, and then we can push the key and go through there until we get to the next file and the next file. And I'm pushing this key, and I'm pushing this key, and I'm watching useless scrolling. And uh, there is, there's all five files now. That took quite a few key presses. And the cursor is at the point of the last match in every file and not at the top of the file, if that mattered. Does this work? Yes. Is it expedient? No, not really. It might be if you only had a couple of files, but in this case, five files, lots of matches, that's a lot of just sitting, pressing the key or leaning on the key while you're sipping your coffee, waiting for something to happen. There's got to be a better way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close all those tabs up now. Now we can see here that this file layout is not really all that complicated at all. It's the name of a file. It's the matches in a file. We can visibly see that the file names always start at column one and everything else is indented. That's to facilitate the folding that we saw just a second ago. And we saw in a previous video uh, earlier in the month that it's just one line of code to open a file in Sublime Text given a file name, and there's the file name right there. So this is definitely something that we could create a plugin for. And in doing so, not only would we be adding a new feature, we would be augmenting the workflow for the particular case of wanting to open all of the files that have matches. Because instead of having to do it all manually, uh, perhaps because the developers of Sublime didn't necessarily think that anyone would want to do that, we can add that functionality ourselves. It's going to make us uh, a lot quicker at what it is that we're doing. And here's an example of a plugin that does that very thing. And as we've been uh, discussing these videos in these videos, of course, uh, there's a link in the description to this plugin so you don't have to transcribe it. But again, it's it's not a very complicated thing at all. Uh, we're leveraging the fact that uh, Sublime applies a custom syntax highlight uh, to the find in files results so that it can show the file names and the line numbers uh, syntax highlighted. So it's just one line of code to find the location of every file name that exists in this entire buffer and one more line of code to extract it and open it in a buffer. Now, the reason why this plugin is as long as it is is because there's two potential workflows here. If there's only a couple of files open to open, then perhaps you want to open them in the existing window. Maybe you're doing this because you want to be editing those files. You do the search, you hit the key, you open those two files, you're good to go. On the other hand, if there's a lot of files to open uh, that you're perhaps going through and uh, verifying something or doing other editing, or you just don't want to mess up the workspace that you have in the current window with these files that you're opening, you might want to open those in a new window. And that is possible as well. With just a few lines of code here, we can tell the command to either use the existing current window, the file that the window that the current find and file results is currently in, 
or just go ahead and create a brand new window and put the files in there. So it's not a very complicated thing at all. Now, one thing that's in here, which I don't think we've seen in any plugin uh, up till now, is this is enabled item down at the bottom here. Now, if you don't implement this, Sublime assumes that the result of this is always true. And basically all it's doing is Sublime is asking this command, hey, should you be enabled right now, given the current situation? And your command can say, yes, yes, I should be enabled, or no, I don't, I don't uh, need to take any action. Action here. And in this case, what we've done is we've said that this command should only be active in the case where the current file is a find in file results. Because if it was in, in any other file, if it was in a text file, for example, it wouldn't hurt, it wouldn't do anything, but it wouldn't hurt because it requires the syntax for the find in files functionality in order to be able to find the file names based on the way that it's currently written. So the good thing about doing something like this is if you were to add this to uh, a key binding, then the key binding will just not work if you press the key and it's not in the correct type of file. If this command was added to the menu, then anytime the current file wasn't a file of the appropriate type, the command would visually disable itself. It would be grayed out, uh, as we've seen, I'm sure, in uh, menus in all sorts of software. To give you a hint that this doesn't apply right here. And you might also want to add this to the command palette as well. And in that case, the command palette will only show you commands that are currently enabled. That is, only commands that apply in the current situation. So using that, you could stop it from appearing in the command palette. So the first thing we might want to do with this is add key binding. So here's a couple of those here. I've used just some arbitrary keys and I've created two key bindings because there's two ways to run this command. The first one just runs it with no arguments. That makes it use the default of using the current window. And the second one uses the argument to tell it it should in fact open in a new window. Now in both of these key bindings, I have added context to make sure that the key binding only applies in a file of a certain type. Now, this is not strictly needed because the command auto already won't trigger if it's not in a file of the appropriate type. However, it can be a good idea to include a context like this even if the command itself uh, already knows not to do it because it's a hint to you when you look in your key bindings that that key binding only triggers in certain situations. Otherwise, you might look at it and then be editing a text file and wonder why it's not opening the files in there. But if this was context was in here as soon as you saw that, you'd immediately know that that was in fact the case. Um, and also, if you wanted to overload the keys, then you want to make sure that uh, Sublime will only consider these in that particular case. Because just because this command is disabled doesn't mean that Sublime won't try to invoke that as the key if that's the key that you press. So I leave it to you if that is something that you need or want, depending on uh, how often you use this. Now, that being the case, this I could see this as a feature that is definitely useful, but perhaps not useful on a daily basis or perhaps not even useful on a weekly basis. Maybe two or three times a month, you might be doing something that requires you to open all of these things. That's not to say that this isn't useful functionality, just not as common as it might be. And if that's the case, a key binding might not be the way to go for something like this, because if you don't do it very often, you might forget what the key binding is. You're not committing it to memory because you don't have to press it very often. And if that was the case, when you decided you wanted to open all the files in order to do it, you'd have to go into your key bindings and scroll and find the key binding that looks like the command that does the thing that you want. And by the time it's all is said and done, you could have just did that thing where you lean on the key and sip your coffee and all of the files eventually open anyway. So in that case, you might want to add these to the command palette instead. And this is a very easy thing to do. You could just create a Sublime commands file. And there's an example of that here. Now, if you're not sure how to do this, there are instructions in the comment in the linked plugin. So you don't have to worry about that here. The important thing here is that this file be of type Sublime commands and that it be in some package. In this case, probably your user package, which you can locate by using preferences browse packages from the menu or from the command palette. And you can give the name of the file anything you want. It's commonly done to name it default because that's the name of the file that adds the default Sublime uh, text command palette entries. But you don't really have to do that. Packages often use uh, their own name for this purpose. So I've just used uh, one that's based on the plugin here. If you already have a file of this type 
in your user package, you could just add the command lines. But as we can see here, all this really is, it's very similar to a key binding. It has the command, it has the arguments that the command needs, if any, and there is a caption associated with that particular uh, command to tell you what it is. And of course, you could change the captions uh, as you like as well. And with that in place, if we were to come back to the actual file here, if I open the command palette, I could say find files, and here are our two commands, open matching files and open matching files in new window. And we can also see here that because there are keys bound to these commands with these arguments in our key map file, the command palette automatically shows us what keys are bound to that. So if you find yourself actually using this more often, then this can be a good thing to do because It'll help you remember what the key bindings for these things actually are. And so uh, we can go ahead and uh, in this particular case, I'll use the command palette entry for find in files, open matching files. And with one key press, there are the five files. So they're all open. They're all at the top of the file ready for me to go ahead and to do my editing work. And I can go ahead and close all of those out. And if I didn't want to use the command palette, I could instead use the key binding like so. That's going to give us a window. I'll maximize it. And here's a brand new window with all of those files open. And I could continue to work in here. Perhaps I'm as I'm editing files and finalizing changes and making sure that everything is correct, I close the file. And then eventually I end up in a position where all of the files are closed. I know I've looked at all of the results. I can close the window. All done. Never had to touch the mouse once during that entire operation. Now, as we've seen here, using simple plugins, we can not only add new features to Sublime Text, we can also change the very workflow of existing tools and functionality as well. And if we can adjust the functionality of Sublime, we can make it work the way that we like to work and not the way someone else likes to work. That allows us to work more naturally and thus more efficiently and get more done in less time. This is one of the key benefits to using Sublime Text. Now, I hope you found this useful and informative. And if you have, please use those buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. And please also avail yourself of the comment section below the video if you have any questions, comments, requests for clarifications, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like to see covered in a future video. Your continued support is what makes continued production of these videos possible. But until that next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.